So here's sort of a confession. Um, over the past 50 years that I've been more serious about my faith journey and um, more serious about worship, um, I've been in several gatherings of both clergy and lay people on that time right after the principal Eucharist on Easter Day, you know, eight days, eight days, and it's all over and everybody is ecstatic. And we turn to each other and say, well, we've done it again. We've raised Jesus from the dead. <laughs> well, that's heresy. <laughs> you know, but it was, said, it was said with a lot of joy because think of all that goes into these eight days. I mean, your participation, your presence, all of the worships, all the music stuff, all, all of the fellowship stuff and hospitality and um, uh, the staff and, and, and everybody, a lot goes into this. And so we've got reason to sort of say, yes, this was important. This was important. My heart was warmed. My heart was touched. I'm so grateful for this time that we've shared together. That's what people were saying. That's what those clergy and lay people were saying. It was, it was really a statement, sort of a joke. It was a statement of gratitude for all that worshipers, all that faithful people had done so that we could sing. Jesus Christ is risen today. It is all about what God does and not us. That's, that's what you heard in these stories, these three stories. Uh, people didn't do all those things. God did all those things. And people were inspired by God to do those things, but, but those were great acts of God. And the same thing goes with that empty tomb. The body wasn't stolen. The body wasn't not placed in the tomb in the beginning. The dead body of Jesus of Nazareth was in the tomb. And then it wasn't. That was a God thing. So in this Gospel of Mark, the oldest Gospel, the, the original Gospel, there's a different spin on a different statement of what those women and those disciples first experienced after the resurrection of Jesus. And you probably saw the difference here. I mean, it's pretty stark. The last line is, and they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. That's how it ends. The Gospel of Mark, the resurrection story. I mean, you can understand why the women there were concerned trying to understand it. I mean, goodness gracious, what if, I mean, think of what we would, how we would have reacted. It was just a mind-blowing event. It was a troubling event. It was, it was just hard to understand. But they got, they got instructions, do not be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. He is not here. Look, there's the place where you live, but go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. And there you will see him. So the tough reality, Jesus' body is broken and dead. And the promise, he's not here, but you can see the risen Christ in Galilee. But still, those faithful women, those faithful women were scared, were afraid. What's going on is in their minds and in their hearts. Really, do we go there? Do we trust this message? Again, think about, put, put yourself in that position. I think we would be a little unnerved too. And, and as a matter of fact, the words are there. They were filled with terror and amazement. That's all, the fearful thing is that when we're in the presence of God, it's sort of like, wow, you know, I, I can't take it all in. And also really what's going on, the, the awful thing, the awesomeness of God, and then the awful, the really scary thing because it's so counterintuitive, it's so countercultural, it's so different than we would expect. So again, it's understandable. But the gospel ends that they said nothing to anyone but they were afraid. Where do we, what, what do we do with that? 
what do we, I mean, we just sang, we go sing some more songs, and the music is beautiful, and darkness, and the light. Why does it end? Or it actually doesn't end, does it? It's a non-ending ending. And maybe it's done on purpose, who knows, but maybe this is God's word, it's done on purpose, so that each one of us here in 1918, 2018, um, <laughs> um, we have to struggle with that question um, wh wh after the initial shock and, and the joy and the joy that we feel right now and that we will feel tomorrow also. What, what's, what's next? What's next? What difference will it make in our lives? That's the question. What difference? How will we be transformed? Jesus of Nazareth was transformed into the risen Jesus Christ. How, how will we, we little humans, whom God loves so much, how will we allow ourselves to be transformed by God? That's the question. And here's, here's a tough statement. If we don't wrestle with that question, all of the joy and the love that we feel right now in this worship will be for naught. It will. Because the purpose of our faith is not really only to praise God and to be joyful. The purpose of our faith in the risen Christ is that our lives are changed, transformed again and again. And if we're not true to that path, that path, of allowing ourselves, our hearts to be opened up even more, our minds to be informed even more, our practices to be even more faithful. If we're not open to that, then we really are missing the message of the resurrection. And we don't want to do that. Don't miss this opportunity. So after we finish our worship, the champagne and chocolate in the parish hall. Mm -hmm. Continue the joy. But I hope as you start going home thinking, you will think, I wonder what God is calling me to do in the way of being transformed into a person who believes even more deeply in the truth of the risen Christ. God is with you as you consider that challenge. Amen.